This episode of Two and a Half Geeks is brought to you by Data Robotics Drobo. You may be familiar with Drobo for the home user, but for small to medium-sized companies, check out drobo.com slash business for simple, sophisticated storage solutions for the enterprise. Coming up on Two and a Half Geeks, we're going to talk about something to make Sandy Bridge even more awesome, PAX East, and a contest that might make you blush, and a whole lot more. The bar has been set wicked fast. It rocked in the benchmarks. We're gonna up the ante uh, a little bit. Processing power, I kinda understand this. Welcome to Two and a Half Geeks. I'm Maya Zaktar, alongside Dave Altavilla and Marco Cipetta. You might know them from Hot Hardware. That's right, and they point. Like <laughs> it's, it's a thing, it's part of what they do. And since this is Two and a Half Geeks... It's an Italian thing. Normally, I kinda know what we're talking about. Today, over my head. So let's talk... <laughs> First, about the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 550, which I hear, or T, I think TI at the end there. I hear yeah. it's a budget graphics card, and that's all I know. Marco? Well, let me, uh, let me tell you more about it. Here, here's one of them, actually. I took a look at three different ones. This is the, uh, the MSI version. Really cool uh, cooler on this baby. So the, uh, the, the GTX 550 TI, basically it like all of... by the way. Oh, say that again? It caused interference. I... The graphics card, again, has so much power... That's, that's right. Power. It's amazing how much power is in these graphics cards. How does it cards. actually perform as a graphics card <laughs> instead of an interference maker? It, it actually <laughs> performs well. So like the other GTX 500 series cards, uh, the GPU on the heart of this baby is a refinement of a, a GT 400 series GPU. It's a refinement of the GTS 450. But what NVIDIA was able to do was uh, you know, use a new transistor mix, crank up the clock speeds, They've also tweaked the memory controller to allow for a mix and matched capacities of RAM chips. So even though you know it has a 122-bit wide, I'm sorry, 192-bit wide uh, memory bus, it doesn't have to have a, a weird frame buffer size. It has one gig frame buffer, and throughout the uh, the benchmarks, it was clearly faster than the GTS 450. Um, you know, it's supplanting in Nvidia's lineup, but performance is kind of you know, for a $150, $160 card, depending on the clocks, it's too far behind cards that are only $10, $20 more. So we're going to have to see how street prices shake out. It may need to get a little cheaper to make a, a, you know, a solid buy in that price range. Are you thinking it's actually going to go out for $150 or like, what, $120? Or is it well, it's, it, it's funny. So it, the MSRP on the, the reference boards uh, at stock clocks are, are $149. And the overclocked versions I looked at go as high as like 155 bucks, um, but basically opinions across the board were it's just slightly more expensive, and like the first day the overclocked boards dropped by like five bucks. So I suspect it's going to creep down by maybe 10, 20 bucks over the next few weeks. And, you know, and for that kind of money to get a full DX11 card with you know Nvidia physics support, 3D Vision support, it's really a lot of graphics card for the money. I still think it looks crazy. The design itself is insane. It looks like a little spaceship or something. So. Well, they don't, they don't all look this crazy. There, there's two other cards I looked at in the Which article. Was that one? That was the MSI? This was the card from MSI, the Cyclone 2 cooler. It's, it's pretty, a pretty wild looking card. Let's start talking about the Sandy Bridge. Now, apparently it can do video transcoding really well, but there's some kind of hang-ups. Right, Dave? Right. Well, um, shortcoming sort of inherent to the architecture, if you think about it, um, Sandy Bridge, obviously, uh, the processor uh, has integrated graphics, and uh, you'd use the output from uh, those integrated graphics, uh, that core, uh, for you know display to your monitor. And if you have a discrete graphics card for gaming, um, you'd use that. Now, obviously, you'd use the outputs on the discrete graphics cards if you want to if you want to game, if you want to take advantage of Sandy Bridge's you know super fast encoding engine for video uh, crunching. You'd have to switch actually physically move the cable to the you know, integrated graphics port on, on your computer. And, uh, you know, obviously a little bit cumbersome, less than optimal. But Sandy Bridge, I mean, let's, let's face it, no joke, th this thing encodes uh, video um, with the integrated processing uh, video uh, decode en encode engine and, and the processor um, in like a fraction of the time of even a discrete graphics uh, processor like a, an NVIDIA graphics card or an ATI graphics card, an AMD graphics card. So you really want to have the best of both worlds, and that's what uh, Lucid's Virtue technology does. It, it allows that uh, switching uh, between the two graphics cores. Does it work seamlessly, or is it, there seems to be like there's a big butt coming? Um, well, there is a butt. It's not that big. 
Um, and, and what it does, the way the technology works is it actually, <laughs> what are you doing? I like big butts. Oh, <laughs> oh unbelievable. So, um, <laughs> yeah, what it does is, is the, the technology will actually grab uh, or, or sense, I should say, uh, a DirectX 10, 9, 11 call, what have you, uh, DirectX only, and send that call for the you know, the graphics or to the graphics core in the graphics card, the discrete graphics card. If it detects that you want to go ahead and, you know, encode some video, it'll send it down to the IGP in the Sandy Bridge processor. Um, and in order to, to offload to uh, the discrete graphics card, it has to grab that uh, information, send it off, take it back, pass it back to the frame buffer in the integrated chip. So it's, there's certainly a little bit of magic, and that's what Virtue does, but it's DirectX uh, only compatible. So OpenGL uh, and other you know, types of graphics engines, which you know, not a large portion of the market, admittedly, um, you know, won't take advantage of the technology. Now, this is a piece of software. How is this going to be implemented? Is it something you can just buy off the shelf or like download it? Or like, is this stuff that a manufacturer is going to pre-install? How do you actually get this? Yeah, this is, this is likely going to be bundled with uh, certain platforms that are approved and validated for it. Um, it is for desktops only. Obviously, you know, the other guys, NVIDIA and, and AMD, both have uh, dynamic switching for mobile platforms, right? NVIDIA's got their Optimus technology, which will offload, you know, graphics calls for, you know, uh, calls on a game engine uh, to the discrete graphics core. Um, so it's interesting to see, you know, NVIDIA, if they wanted to, could come out with a solution like this for the desktop as well, but they haven't yet. So, yeah, it's going to be, you know, something that's bundled and validated in uh, desktop SKUs, depending on manufacturer. Now, Marco, you guys covered PAX 2011, okay, PAX yep. East. I, I don't yes. even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> what is PAX? Because, like, PAX, they, they covered PAX it when I was a... working, and I was like, I just... It's it's awesome, and I'm gonna I'm gonna build it up to be bigger than it is yet because we want more stuff like this on the East Coast. It is yeah, a baby. huge, awesome gaming show that took place in Boston. Um, it was the founders of the Penny Arcade uh, comic online comic kind of started it, and it's been snowballing and picking up steam. And this year's show was just really really cool. You know, up it was, I think it was the Boston Convention Center, right, Dave? Yes, exactly. Yeah, so yep. yeah, we uh, you know we we both took a trip up there. It was just a hop, skip, and a jump for Dave. I jumped in the car for a few hours, and you know we shot up there. We roamed the show floor and saw a bunch of the cool games that are coming out. But also a lot of the uh, top hardware vendors were there showing off these just killer, killer gaming rigs, just over the top rigs, you know, that gamers want to see. And we got to see some some really wild stuff at ASUS, uh, EVGA, Gigabyte, basically all the major players. Plus, you know, got to play some uh, some Duke Nukem, some Portal Two. Saw some Battlefield 3, Gears of War 3 on the Xbox, all of the hot games that are coming. Crisis 2, that was there. Yep. Yeah. What was the kind of balance you saw there? Did you see a, a lot of uh, just computer hardware? Was it more gaming, actual, actual games? Or did you see a lot of a large presence by console manufacturers as well? I mean, what was so the mix of all that? It, it was a yeah. mix, but what I really like about PAX is the PC had a huge presence. I mean, um, it, you know, NVIDIA was there uh, showing off all the graphics cards, 3D Vision, all that other good stuff. Um, lots of PC gamers um, were all over the show floor. The Gigabyte had a bunch, you know, a little LAN set up in their booth for, for, uh, for PC gaming. Um, it, it was, I found it to be a pretty good balance with a larger emphasis on PC gaming than I thought would be there. And I was kind of excited about that. Even, you know, peripheral manufacturers were there. So we're hoping that uh, this show continues to boom because we had fun and it was set up really well, so easy to get to. It was just a really fun show. If I was on the East Coast, I wonder what that'd be like. Uh, let, let's talk about some <laughs> the OCZ. You guys know that name. Every time we talk about OCZ, we talk about SSDs, and then Dave talks, and then I tune out. <laughs> <laughs> he tunes out. OCZ oh, no. did something. They bought a, a company called Indolinks. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, Dave, break it down. Uh, yep. Basically, it's it's a it's a bold move by OCZ. Uh, this is a manufacturer that um, over the years has uh, sort of blazed a trail with uh, SSD controller technology from various companies, uh, Indolinks in inclusive as well. And Indolinks actually early on was pretty much the forerunner uh, performance-wise, 
uh, in the early days of the SSD, the, the SATA-based SSD. But as of recent, Sandforce has become a force, no pun intended or pun intended, I guess, um, in the SSD controller space. And OCZ has been lighting up the market with Sandforce solutions. And they're arguably the, the fastest uh, controller for SATA-based SSDs and PCI Express, actually, uh, on the market these days. Um, so it was it was surprising to see OCZ stepping out and acquiring Indolinks, you know, staunch competitor to Sandforce, and uh, you know, really stepping out uh, out of the box here and 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 competing on a different playing field uh, or at a different level, I guess, versus the uh, essentially the the rebranders in the market that are are taking con- other controllers, third party controllers, and, and building SSDs from them. Do you have any idea what exactly they're going to do with Indolinks as a company? Are they going to just like eat them whole, or are they just going to end up tearing it apart? Are they going to just keep it as a separate little company? Any any idea? Yeah, no. Well, you know, obviously, yeah. OCZ acquired these guys for access to their intellectual property. They're, they've got some twenty patents or something like that um, to their name, and um, you know, the, the underlying technology. Uh, that they've acquired is going to help position them more firmly in the SSD space uh, for a you know a soup to nuts solutions provider you know r- right from uh, uh, the 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 bare silicon the the most um, I guess critical enabling silicon in the SSD I mean let's face it flash flash chips are a commodity the controller is sort of the special sauce and uh, these guys have acquired Indolinks and so um, it, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, I think you'll see OCZ certainly uh, marketing sand floor space, you know, competitive controller technologies for some time now, especially until this deal settles. But once it does, these guys are going to have some serious IP uh, in their you know, in in house now. Uh, they've got this controller coming up uh, called Tinkerbell. Believe it or not, um, sounds cool, doesn't it? Or maybe not. Um, it's yeah, fairy dust. Yeah, it's so yeah. They've got a controller called Tinker, Tinkerbell that's going to allow them to branch out beyond just traditional SSDs into uh, ultra mobile storage for like handsets and things like that. Handsets like that phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> On cue, baby. <laughs> contest time. I hear that you have something sick that you put together, Marco. Tell the people. He didn't. He's not putting it together. But All right. So so <laughs> yeah, I'm actually not building this one. We're going to formally announce it on Monday, and holy sh**, this thing is, is freaking badass. This is going to be a completely nuts, over-the-top system. Dave, if I forget to thank somebody, jump in. But, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, we've kind of reached out to a few folks in uh, NVIDIA, Main Gear, Patriot, uh, Intel, Asus. They're all kind of pitching in, and when we got the parts list back just a few hours ago, our jaws dropped. This is going to be by far the fastest rig we've ever given away. The, you know, basically the most all-inclusive rig. It's not just going to be a tower. And if we're impressed, you know, I think we're going to turn a lot of people into, you know, dribbling little meat sacks when they see this spec list. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> dribbling little meat sacks. Isn't that nice? That could be the title of the contest, or it could just be holy <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure it's there. <laughs> SEO, make it optimized. You know, people can find it. Uh, so it's, get it's this. It's amazing to see the grins you guys have on your face right now. You, you, you had to hear us talking oh. about it before. We were reading the list, going, "Oh my God, this is it's, crazy." We it's, they really, really came through huge, huge for us. It's, it's unbelievable, gonna awesome. and we're gonna we're gonna actually take we're gonna go down to Main Gear's factory, and we're gonna see how they build PCs and show this thing being built too. Yeah. So how you like that? That is. Freaking awesome. this is, the details are going to drop on Monday. Is that right? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, so now you've got a reason to go to Hot Hardware. Of course you had a reason to go to Hot Hardware. Not only can you learn about everything we talked about here, but you can win the holy <laughs> shit machine. <laughs> there you go. Or you can go around the web because Hot Hardware is everywhere. Dig.com slash Hot Hardware. Twitter.com slash Hot Hardware. Facebook.com slash Hot Hardware. YouTube.com slash Hot Hardware vids. Whew, got through that one fast. And uh, well done. that's it for this episode, I think. Unless there's anything else. Anything else, guys? That's it, brother. Shall we say thanks for stopping by?